Hello and welcome to the WCOM Basics Differential Equation Series. In this video I'm going to show you an application of the separation of variables technique we use to solve separable differential equations. Um, I have here Newton's Law of Cooling and this is not this is not the only application of separation of variables but it is the most famous one and the simplest to understand. It says that uh, uh, so first I'll lay out the, I'll lay out the um, variables before I explain what it says. So capital T is temperature, so we're going to be looking at something and studying how its temperature evolves over time, and time of course is the little t. K is some constant that we will solve for with our initial conditions, so our temperature at time zero and our temperature at some random time that is not zero. Um, and A is the temperature of the surrounding atmosphere. So Newton's law of cooling tells us that the rate of change with respect to time is proportional to the difference of the temperatures of our object and the atmosphere. Um, and this is intuitively obvious because if you have a cold thing in a hot room, it's going to warm up. If you have a hot thing in a cold room, it's going to cool down. So let's jump right in and solve for our temperature as a function of time. So we have uh, 1 over t minus a times the derivative of temperature is equal to a constant. Um, and the constant, of course, is multiplied by t raised to the 0 power, which is just 1. And you can also think of this as a constant function in terms of time. So as time goes on, this is not changing, which is um, basically an intuition as to why, why we can break this up as we do. Uh, integrate both sides with respect to t, or with respect to time, because we have two t's. Um, and in, last video, in the last video, we saw that due to the um, integral form of the chain rule, we're going to take the derivative of 1 over t, or the integral, sorry, of 1 over t minus a with respect to temperature, and the integral of k with respect to time. So after we integrate, it's just basic uh, logarithm and power rule, we get ln of t minus a is equal to kt. Uh, exponentiating both sides to get rid of that nasty natural log will... Uh, oh, yeah, one thing I forgot, which it, what I said was very important and then promptly forgot to do, uh, was to add that uh, constant c. And so if I had put it there, I would have been fine, and I remembered to carry it over to the next step. So exponentiating uh, to get rid of that natural log. Um, and the um, laws of exponents says we can break this up into a product, and this C is going to ob be absorbed or the C is going to absorb E to the C because E is also just a, a constant. So you can think of that as a new arbitrary constant times E to the KT. So now, so now we have our temperature function as a function of time is equal to C E to the KT plus A. And to build an intuition of what is really going on here is uh, in order to do that, we're going to look at time, when time is zero and when time is very, very big. Um, so when time is zero, we have e to the zero, which is just one. So we have c plus a. So depending on if your, um, your object that you're looking at is initially hotter or colder, uh, c is either going to be less than or greater than a or uh, the absolute value of C, that is. Um, and 
you'll see later that in order to solve for k, we're going to be taking the natural log of something. Uh, and so k is going to be less than um, e. And you're going to have to take my word for that. Because as t goes to infinity, uh, this is going to get arbitrarily small. So we're, because we're going to be multiplying by k, which is less than 1. So uh, we're going to get something arbitrarily small here, add, adding that to atmosphere temperature, and we're just going to get atmospheric temperature. So without any further ado, let's put what I just said to practice and solve our first Newton's Law of Cooling problem. So we have um, our initial condition, and we have some other data point, and we have our atmospheric uh, temperature. Um, of course, units are always nice, but as long as you use the same units throughout, you won't have any problems. Uh, so we're just going to say we're measuring things in minutes, because that's a reasonable scale. Uh, so we're just going to set up our uh, Newton's Law equation, which, if you can't remember, the t as a function of time is equal to c e to the kt plus a. You can always just derive it uh, with intuition, saying that the derivative, the rate of change of temperature is proportional to the differences of temperature and atmosphere. Um, the only thing different now is that we have a value for A, and that A is not going to be changing, even though if you really think about it, uh, the atmosphere, uh, if you have a big enough body of water, or if you have a big enough, or if you have a small enough room, the atmosphere is going to change. But on large scales, with small things that we're worrying about, we're not going to worry about that. Um, so the atmosphere is going to be treated as a constant. So we have ln of t minus 15, 25 equal to kt plus c. So then we have uh, t minus 25 is equal to uh, ce to the kt. Um, so we have our function t as a function of time. And from here, there's a variety of ways you might get thrown a problem. Like, they'll give you a temperature at some time, and you'll be, or they'll give you a temperature at an unknown time, and you'll be asked to find out how long was this. Um, you'll be asked to find out, say, how long has this uh, solution been out. Or if you're in forensics, studying forensics, or just interested, um, if you're a, a dead body, then at time t equals zero, you're going to have normal body, body temperature. And then somewhere down the line, you're going to be closer to the atmospheric temperature, and you can see how long ago the murder happened. So, uh, but this is a, just a basic uh, kind of plug and chug scenario where we're just going to uh, put in our times, solve for our constants, and move along. So it's nice as we have t equals 0, um, and capital T equals 5 degrees Celsius. Um, so e to the 0 is just going to become 1, and we can get c equals, and we get c equals negative 15. Uh, so uh, I'll just write a, a new master uh, equation here. And now we can, I'll just use this one to solve for k at time t equals 5, capital T is 10, 
degrees Celsius. Uh, just caught my mistake. Uh, 5 minus 25 is negative 20. Uh, so moving on uh, and solving for k. Uh, so we have uh, one fifth of the natural log of three quarters is equal to k. How I got there was just uh, algebraic manipulation, subtracting uh, 25 from our time at t equals 5, uh, dividing by our, our c that we just found, and um, Divide, you divide by the C you just found. I reduce that a little bit and then take the natural log of both sides. And if you notice that 3 quarters is less than E, so uh, that will give us a value which it, that is less than 1, which, as I said, works out. And I'm not going to bore you with calculations, but um, if you plug this in, you will get something that is less than 1. Uh, so yeah, um, then once you find k, you have your function of temperature as a function of time. Uh, sorry, you have your temperature as a function of time. Uh, thank you for watching. You can go to the next video here, which will be on linear first order differential equations. You can also subscribe to our YouTube channel, uh, find a playlist of this series, or visit our website with all the links to the side. Um, of course, on our website, you can find this glorious book. Uh, and if you're on mobile, links to all of these can be found in a card uh, in the corner. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next video.